work ethics. Like I get that. But uh, when it comes to the work ethics and then saying that they don't respect their, their boss, I'm trying to see I, like, how does that relate? Cause they still go to work regardless if they use all their PTO and all this stuff that you're talking about, they're just using and finessing the system. Like what I mentioned earlier, people in this, on, in, in this world use what they can. That's just how it goes. So how does that take away from them not respecting the boss since because they most still black, go to most work? Black, most black, just because I get up and go to my job, that's my responsibility. That does not mean that I'm sitting there in the workforce system creating a uh, copacetic relationship with my boss or working directly with my boss. If anything, especially when you know that you're not in love with a job, we're trying to avoid them because you don't want to be on somebody's radar. And again, all you got to do is use common sense in this dynamic. You see the behavior versus a person who just made it there and they like the job and they're cool with the money versus the person who feel like they they could be doing something else. You see the behavior on people when they first get entered into the, the, the job. Endurance orientation. You see the difference in the work ethic. That work ethic definitely transmits to the incentives that they want to take. Everybody don't want to move up the ladder. Everybody does not work to get the incentive of being promoted. And a lot of times, Black women, the first thing we say is, oh, we got to work four times harder than everybody. When you sit there and you compare work ethic to a person who is showing up every day and a person who actually wants to succeed in their job, they create a relationship with their boss. They want to be seen by their boss. Just because you're not cussing a motherfucker out every time you walk in the door, that's not mean you respect them people. Because if you respected them, it would show up in the in the productivity. We're not making all this great production. That's just not the honest truth. I agree I, to that. I, I'm just saying that, like, like it makes sense. But then it's like, you know, if you got the mindset of people thinking that working is like like slave, you slaving for a job. You know, people are not going to go to work and just love what they're doing. They have to have a passion into what they do, which means they have to choose and figure that out. And people, some people don't figure that out until they're about 35, 40 years old. So before that, they're going to work for a job and use it until they get to where they want to be. Um, but that's just another topic. That's how I'm looking at it. But that's it. That don't correlate to true. respect. What I'm saying is we have this idea that we go on to work kissing ass and being in these people's face and then we go on the office events and we kicking it with the, all of their functions. We're not doing it. You know who you see integrated in all those overhead functions? White women are running them. It's not black women. The moment that we get an opportunity to be off, we are off. We stay away from the office kiss ass. We stay away from the woman who is doing all of that extra shit because she's probably the woman who's making our life harder. It's very rare that you get a lot of good sisters in corporate America who got your back. We all can talk about that experience. So to sit here and say that we are going to work respecting these people, white men are not always our boss. Let's be clear. We work under white women. We work under other white, black, uh, black women, and we work under black men. And a lot of times when we're not the, the pretty privileged presenter, we're trying to get the hell away from around them. We're doing everything we can to go to work and mind our business. That's what a lot of black women mentality is. I ain't come here to make no friends. So why are we sitting here trying to all put the fact that we respect these people so much? No, we don't. You know what's crazy? You know what's well, that's, crazy? That's not, what I really, that's not what I really spoke to was the uh, respect factor, but they just understand the duty, right? M main things that I mentioned was they prepare for it. They go to school for it, right? That's what I was talking about, right? They're prepared for it. They know how to conduct themselves. They do dress a certain way. If you don't do these things, you get fired. So they are doing them. They're doing them. Oh. They're going to work every day and they're performing their responsibilities right the work functions they're doing it and i saw them saying they're doing it they're doing what they're supposed to do so they, they're handling they, the I really, I really think begrudging begrudging I think or not, talking begrudging about or not two different they're sides doing it of the black community i really right. think that we're not we cannot <laughs> smash the two together we're literally talking about two different sides of our community paris is right trev is right Lady Di is right. Like we're not talking about the same um, economic group of women. We're not. Trail and we have to realize an that. Anomaly, though. Let's be clear. That's not the majority. Anomaly. Of it's an anomaly yes. of black women who go to work and work. I don't That's think it's an anomaly. An I think it's the hood rat who switch jobs every month, every no, other month. That's not true. I, 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 that's not true. true. I, I think that. that's that's true. True. That's women right. who do have something to fall back on, like assistance. 
they try to go to work. They don't want to work. They see they're making too much for the assistance. They drop the job. Then they get tired of staying at home. So they may go get another job. I think women, I think now what I will say is like my job, I'm the only black woman. I, I'm the only one. to. Okay. So I will say Wait that. Wait a minute. Hold up. No, no, no. Hold, hold on. Up. Hold on, Swing. Let her finish, Swing. Let her finish. Can you say it again? I, I, I didn't. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Let her So I think, I think the, the population of women who don't, you know, want to go to work are the people that are either waiting on a man to pay their bills or they waiting on the system to continue to pay their bills. That's it. Mm -hmm. But that's not all black women. That's that's the like Casey was saying the economic the economic I, level I, of black on, black let, women. Let, let, let us finish. Let us finish. Let us finish. Don't even lead in. The I've never had a black woman boss ever. It's always been a white man. So whatever jobs that these women are going after, they know they're not going to be there long anyway. They're not going there for a career. They're going to work a job. They're not they're not trying to have a career. They're not, trying to, they're, not trying, they're not trying to take care of anybody else but themselves. And again, when they don't feel like taking care of themselves, they rely on somebody else or some other entity to do it for them. Explain the nurses, Precious, because we got a lot of black women who happen to be in the nursing sector. And you go to work, you go to school, and you prepare to be a nurse. And we see now that a lot of black women went to the nursing field today for the money. We've seen an influx of it during the pandemic. This is how I know y'all not actually thinking of this from an objective standpoint, because even you would be an anomaly. The fact that you have you're the only black person, the only black woman in your office sector, the di diversity culture has increased. You're an anomaly, baby. That ain't even something common today. So to even say that you not you can't even speak from the experience that I have had. I have worked under black women, white men, black men and white women. I have had a wide range of bosses. I have worked in every sector that you can think of, from retail to correctional facility to current and corporate America where I have a license. So I get to see dealing with people with disabilities and all these other things. Throughout these, the duration of my workforce experience, I can absolutely tell you that there is a very minute number, educated or not, of black women who are getting over on the system once they learn it. We get complacent. We're no different than anybody else. But the idea that we're going into these jobs Working so hard, that is an absolute lie. When we discovered that these motherfuckers are getting paid more than us to do less. Hold on, wait a minute. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What, what, how, many, how many of y'all are the only ladies? How many of y'all are the only black women in y'all office? I'm the only one that runs my program. So <laughs> my for me, it's it's like it's just my deg like my degree. Most black women don't do what I like. I'm in finance, so. Only black woman in your office, practically. What about you, Casey? My direct boss is a black woman, and I'm the, I'm, I'm, the only, I'm the only one of my age group black. There's other black women, but they're twice my age. What field are they in, though? Right, field matters. HR recruiting. All right, that's, HR that's HR cool. is very heavy with yeah. With there, there's a lot yeah. of sisters in that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we we in there, but like three all right. under a black woman. Yeah, my and this is not. This is not. I'm, I don't want to go into too much detail, but it's not a, a regular HR setting, recruiting setting. But go ahead. But um, 